Hello world and all who inhabit it, I'm Ruby Riot and we have so many good fundraisers today. We're some money here. Sarah, are you in my office? It started back in 94 on the east coast of the state. Ultra Violet Philadelphia, Gorilla had their own thing in LA. A big no hollow vacancy, full of hot air, breath of fresh air from this industry. You put out the punch, the dragons, the heroes, they all get through the sea. Hello! You know what? I'm not even gonna bother. She. She already did it. She already did it. Uh, welcome to Hooligans Unite. My name, my name is Ruby, and this is episode nine. Uh, thank you guys so much for being patient with me. Um, I know it's a little bit later on in the week, but I promised you guys I'd get you a video, and that I did. But before we get to that, I just wanted to remind you guys that the Hooligans Help St. Jude Children's Hospital fundraiser is still in full effect. Uh, we are just shy of $2,000, which is awesome. I'd love to hit $2,000 before next week. Next week is the Pay Your Dues raffle, um, and then we'll be announcing the nonprofit organization we will be working with for the month of September. Wow, it's September already. Holy cow, that's wild. Anyways, so just to remind you guys, I'll do this real fast because I know you guys know, but the prizes that you can win if you donate $20 or more and you win a Pay Your Dues raffle, an exclusive Hooligans Unite t-shirt, only available to people who donate and win the Pay Your Dues raffle, an autographed 8x10 of yours truly, or a personalized message and this month's artwork done by yours truly. Which I'm so excited about this one. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it on Instagram and Twitter, but it is finished. The Rugrats, Tommy and Chucky. I was really, I was really proud of this one. I was really proud of this one. Um, but this is um, one of a kind, only painted by myself. Um, not a lot of people have paintings done by me because I just started painting very recently. So you could be one of them. Or if you donate $100 or more, um, you can win all of these prizes. And because you guys managed to get the fundraiser to $1,000 within the week that I promised, I added these amazing goodies. Um, these are both of my action figures that I have out right now. Um, I've never had an action figure before this, so this is very exciting. Both of these action figures are signed. Signed action figures, both of them, of yours truly, short hair, long hair, kind of a weird smirk, tattoos, all of it, both of them could be yours if you donate to the Hooligans Help St. Jude Children's Hospital right now. Right now. I mean, not right now. After the video, click the link down below. And that brings me to today's video. Awkward moments with Ruby Riot. Now, I've not done a video like this before, um, so I'm kind of excited to see uh, the feedback on it, and if you guys want to see another one, um, things like that. I am primarily kind of a socially awkward person. I don't do well in social scenarios, like the ones with people. I'm bad at that. So I wanted to do this video for you guys um, so I can hear about maybe some of your awkward moments or made me feel better about myself because most of these moments in this video um, are about people not recognizing my existence when I'm feet away from them. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Thumbs up if you like it. Um, don't thumbs down it because it'll break my heart. And I will see you guys next week. Hello again. Today, we're going to be talking about awkward moments. Now I know what all of you were thinking. I've never experienced anything like that before, so. We just came here to say, what the? Yeah. Now while most of us haven't encountered a whole lot of social situations. We need to be ready for when the social situations arise again. So today, I'm gonna to be running through a couple awkward moments that sometimes you may encounter and how to remedy said awkward moments. That awkward moment when 
you run into somebody, are you an acquaintance, are you a friend, or do they have absolutely no idea who you are at all? It happens to me a lot. So you don't always really know how to approach them. Do you shake their hand? Do you fist bump? Do you hug? Do you chest bump? All of these things sometimes get lost in translation. Hey, what's up? It's nice to see you. Oh, hey, man. Uh, 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 oh, God. Yeah, hey, hey. I mean, I was going in for a hug with you. Handshake and... As of recent, I know of a lot of people who have kind of been doing the elbow thing. I think I'm gonna hold on to that from here on out. So it's probably easier to just assert whatever you're gonna do from as far away as you can do it. Oh, <laughs> what's up, man? It's nice to see you. You will give a clear indication as to what you think that you are to that other person. Only after when they tell their friend, why did the crazy girl hug me, will you have to learn that you're not that close. Oftentimes, and I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me, when you go to high five someone, sometimes they either don't see it or don't acknowledge it at all, and you stand there like an idiot with your hand in the air. Yeah, man, so then I said, stick that promotion with the sun don't shine, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, told, you totally told him, you know? <laughs> right here, man. Right here. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Starting to get a little tired. And sometimes, just giving yourself a good old fashioned high five seems really sad and pathetic and uh, might teach you just not to high five people anymore. And the last one is what happens to me probably more than any other situation known to man. When you're telling a story and everybody in the group is paying attention at the beginning and slowly but surely everyone in the group starts becoming distracted with something else and the only person that's paying attention to the story anymore is the person that was there. You guys, you guys, I have this crazy story to tell you, right? So one time we were at Tribute to the Troops and like Vince is walking back from the from the ring and like you know you never know when to shake his hand or whatever cuz he's really, you know, intimidating or whatever, but you know. So yeah, you know, Vince is coming by and you know, I I wave to him and I'm like, "Hello, sir. It's nice to see you." But, you know, uh Sarah over here crazy, crazy broad. She, she looks at him and she, she looks at him and she just like, she like growls for like whatever reason. She like growls. She looks at Vince and she's like, hello, sir. And you know the story. You, you know it. You, you, you were there. You, you, the story's about you. Now, a lot of people seem to fix this problem by saying something wild and elaborate that didn't really happen just to see if anybody's paying attention. And then these like circus clowns came up and like were blowing up balloon animals. And we were like, whoa. We were like, whoa. Whoa. There, nobody's, nobody's listening to me. But that sometimes can backfire because all that proves is that no one's paying attention to you before, no one's paying attention to you now, and if you try to tell any other story, they won't be listening. So my only solution to that is just get friends who don't mind hearing the same story about themselves a couple hundred times and try not to always take it so personally when everybody just doesn't listen to you, so. <laughs> uh, just a little dip. <laughs> and those have been awkward moments with Ruby Riot. What? There's, there's two, there, there's two T's. Another T, there's another T. 
just, it's just I don't, I don't know why there's another, t there's, there's another T. Just put, just put it there. Put, just put it there. Thank you.